So if you remember back, about a year ago, the developers at Frontier handed me early access to their new F1 manager game, and within five minutes I'd managed to hire the Latifi for a stupid amount of money and burn the house Formula 1 team to the ground. Imagine my surprise then when the developers came back this year and asked if I wanted to have another go. Hey there guys, I'm Will, welcome to FP1, and that's exactly what I'm doing today. So upon loading up the game, my first decision was to choose which team I wanted to ruin this time. And given recent events, there was really only one correct answer here. It was a disappointing end to the 2022 season for Alpha Tauri, leaving them in ninth, their lowest finish since taking on the new name. But they can't afford to dwell on disaster if they're going to battle their way back up the standings. Now with the signing of Nick De Vries alongside returning driver Yuki Tsunoda, it's time for Alpha Tauri to shake off last year's troubles and prove they've got what it takes. <laughs> So with an adequate name selected and Nick DeVries looking like he wanted to kill me already, I jumped straight into the action. And speaking of DeVries, my first task as team principal was going to be an obvious one. Right, first things first. You need to go. Having looked at the list of possible replacements and briefly considered hiring Jesus and Toto Wolf's long lost son, I came to my senses and approached the honey badger. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Did you really expect any less from me? Ricardo, unsurprisingly, wanted a lot of money. Apparently that McLaren payout really wasn't doing enough. Regardless, we eventually forced him to accept as De Vries was cast into the free agency abyss. Out of curiosity, what was Nick De Vries' rating? <laughs> I never even looked at that. I just didn't even care. In other signing news, I did try to poach Xavi from Ferrari. However, apparently he's still checking if his current deal allows it. Now I'm kind of wishing I could have gone with Ferrari just to fire Xavi. <laughs> so having splashed all the money I had left on new parts for Danny Rick to smash into a wall, I checked my email inbox to find an angry message from Christian Horner. He was less than impressed, I'd just stolen his new reserve driver. So anyway, I headed off to Bahrain for the opening round of the season, and straight away was greeted by David Croft, who had some rather interesting takes, it has to be said. Williams are taking a gamble this weekend on a new driver, but you have to ask, will it pay off? So, let's get back to the racing. <laughs> Did he say no? <laughs> Was that, was that meant to happen? With Crofty on crack and Sky Sports bias more prevalent than ever, I skipped practice and jumped straight into qualifying. Here I was able to try out the new helmet cam, which I've got to say, looks really damn good. After the first set of runs, Ricardo was in the clear, though Yuki was languishing back in 18th. I decided to send both drivers out for one last shot at the end of the session, though for some reason Ricardo thought he was driving the McLaren again. Well, this line from Ricardo is messy. <laughs> Shockingly enough, Danny didn't improve on his time, and when Sonoda did, I was a little bit concerned about both cars making it through to Q2. Being right on the cusp meant any driver in the bottom five going quicker would send me out of qualifying. Luckily, most of these drivers consisted of Bottas and Sargent, so I wouldn't have much to worry about. When Piastri failed to improve, I was safe for Q2, and pulling a similar strategy, saw both cars end quali 12th and 13th on the grid. Not a bad showing for someone who has absolutely no idea what he's doing. That brings us to race day then, and once again, Crofty was on top form. Many people here and at home are wondering what the Haas driver can do. So with everyone excited about Haas of all things, the five lights went out and we got racing in Bahrain. And this is where things began to go wrong. Both cars made an acceptable start, and having survived longer than Romain Grosjean's Bahrain Grand Prix, early signs were positive. Then, as I told Ricardo to start going aggressive, he decided that he just wasn't going to do that. Stay close to the cars in front. Oh, great, okay. <laughs> Norris was next to come through, then Sargent. Oh, come on. And soon enough, all we had for company was the Alfa Romeos. This horrible embarrassment aside, I knew part of this was down to starting both cars on the hard compound of tyre and that another part was down to me forgetting to change that at the beginning of the race. But with no safety cars on the horizon, my incredibly well thought out plan was to try out a one-stop. That would mean suffering in the early stages, but hopefully reaping the rewards when we came in for mediums near the end. To try and mitigate the damage, I told Ricardo he could go all out on his ERS, 
but as a top tip I'm sure you won't find anywhere else, it's important to always remember you need to turn this off at some point. Oh sh**. With everything going according to plan, it was almost time to come in for those mediums. And I'll show off this pit stop as it's basically the only thing the team did right all weekend. At this point we were running a phenomenal P19 and P20. Though that all changed when those cars on two stoppers came in for fresh rubber. Now we could finally mix it in the pack with some other cars. While I say that, we managed to look even more embarrassing. Oh my god, you just let him by. Thankfully, not long after this, Piastri began to run into problems. Not that I cared though, I was just happy we were no longer last. And as we got into the closing laps of the race, my biggest worry became Zhou Guan Yu and the Alfa Romeo. He was on fresh tyres with three laps to go, though I at least had a five second gap between him and Ricardo. You'd think I'd be safe, though not quite. I swear to God, if Zhou gets us on the last lap, I'm going to be fuming, don't you dare. Ricardo, push, just push, everything. Keep pushing. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh my god. Come on, defend. Defend from him. Do not let him go. It's the last lap. Come on. Come on. Yes. No. Force him out wide. They... Oh, I don't like this. No. No. All right, you got the inside line. Don't. No. Don't do that. Oh. You had one corner, man. F1 managers showed off their new wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing physics in the most painful way possible. Though, for some reason, despite dropping like a stone in the race, the team seemed relatively happy with me. But when Yuki Tsunoda told me he thought he'd put on a, quote, good show, I lost my call and replaced him with Roy Nassani. Not my best performance for an initial race on the game, but what are my honest thoughts and impressions after a couple of hours of play? Well, whilst visually the game looks fairly similar to its previous iteration, the new additions behind the scenes are a welcome one, even if they did lose me that coveted P17 at the end there. I'm looking forward to giving the game more of a go, and if you'd like to see that on the channel, it all depends on how well this video does, so let me know by dropping it a like and getting subscribed if you haven't already. Once again, a massive thank you to the devs over at Frontier for giving me early access to the game and all of my patrons and channel members for supporting me and helping me get opportunities like this. If you'd like to get involved in that at all, all you have to do is drop down the links in the description below. Now I'll be back on Sunday with another new video, but until then, have a good one.